The Dwarf 2 is an excellent and highly portable smart telescope to watch the night sky. It's also very good to watch the sun and even the moon during daylight. But did you know that you can use it for nature observations during the day? Wonder how it behaves? Me too, that's why I decided to take it for a walk. It happens that it's the flamingo season, when the flamingos can be seen in large flocks with up to several hundred birds congregating in the salt pain waters that we have here around in Algarve. The place where I live and point my telescopes to the sky. Planet Earth. Continent Europe. Country Portugal. Region Algarve. 37 latitude Bortol 5. And one of the best characteristics of the Dwarf 2 mini telescope it's the portability. It's so small that we can take it anywhere. So I did it. Placed it in my car to go to the Flamingo Zone. My kids, of course, wanted to go with me. The problem is we have to be careful not to scare the flamingos, otherwise it will be all blown up. They stay near the ocean on the salt panes, a place from where we remove the salt from the sea water for a long time. Let's go by walk and from here we can't see them yet. We need to get a bit closer. No, we can't do it from the street. We will have to enter into the salt pains. Let's go. From here I can already see them. Now I will place here the Dwarf 2 and point and zoom. I'm not a photographer and I have no idea how this will end. Lower your expectations. My goal is only to have some fun. The sun is very strong and I'm struggling to see anything in my smartphone. I'm not used to this. I'm used to the night sky. Well, the first mistake already done. As you can see, I placed in the wrong place the telescope. It has the bushes in front of the telescope, which turns it very hard to focus on the flamingos. I'm moving the arrows to see if I can focus. Well, the seagulls. Where are the flamingos? Oh, they're right there behind the seagulls. But I still have the problem with the bushes. I'm trying to use the tracking feature, which is supposed to track if any movement in the object. In this case, a flamingo. According to Dwarf Lab, I have to select a square with my fingers and I'm trying to but for some reason this is not well for some reason no for a specific reason the bushes of course how can I track if I have the bushes between the flamingos and my camera I will move the dwarf to another place without the bushes in front of it now at least it's a bit higher and I think it will work. Yeah, it looks better here. Now move again the camera with the arrows. Now it's getting easier. Okay, I think here is a good place. Let's select the flamingo to track. Well, it's tracking. Clearly, it's tracking. It passes through another flamingo, it keeps tracking, but I wanted to see it flying. That's a matter of luck and it will be very hard to do it. And meanwhile, it is recording a video. Well, I'm amazed that it keeps tracking even with other birds around. Oh, he lost the tracking. He moved to the blackbird. 
which will be easier if uh, only one bird is on the field of view. Now it's tracking only the black one and I don't know what bird is it. I will try to track again and oh no, I don't know what happened and the dwarf got crazy. Let's recenter it and try it again. There we go, another flamingo. At least the kids are quiet while I'm doing this. And it changed to another flamingo. Yeah, it's very hard with loads of birds together. Changed again. You know what? I will take some pictures to at least have something. And now let's come back home and use the dwarf where I like it the most, at the night sky. <laughs> 